Welcome to the FL Studio 12 Beta. In this video, we'll cover the significant changes thus far. See the video information for download links and more information. Please remember, if you don't own FL Studio yet, you can buy 11 and get 12 free as part of your lifetime free updates when it's released. Let's start with the interface and scaling. Open the options, general settings. FL Studio 12 is now 100% vectorial, so the user interface can be scaled for use on high resolution or touch monitors. For example, let's change the main GUI to 200%. You need to restart FL Studio for this to take effect. That's just a little big for my display, I think, but if you have a 4K monitor or beyond, this is going to rock your world. There are also options to independently change the scaling of pop-ups and toolbars. The mouse cursor scaling is under the advanced section here. By the way, this detach all plugins option will be a time saver for some and the step sequencer can now be detached too. A tip, keep an eye out on options and dialog panels for these hidden areas. Some familiar options you can't find may be lurking there. The menu bar. First up, the pattern and song switch is here. Song plays the playlist and pattern plays the currently selected pattern. The menu bar can now be hidden. Right click it to show the options. Just click the FL Studio desktop to bring it back. Control F11 is the shortcut. Don't forget to mouse over icons and check the hint panel to see what they are. There's quite a few new ones, like this plugin picker button. There's also a new third panel. Right click the menu bar and select it from the menu. Both these can be customised by right clicking on them and selecting items. The mixer. Notice the splitters. These define the left, middle and right docks, where you can move any and all insert tracks. Hide docks by clicking on the splitters. Resize internal mixer controls by clicking on the handle on the splitter and dragging vertically. Right click the handle to reset. Routing works as before, but is visually much improved. This selected track is routed to these four send tracks. And on that point, we no longer have hardwired send tracks. The tracks here in the right dock have been set up to simulate the old behavior. In fact, we can move these to the middle dock if we want. And there they are. Okay, back to the right dock. So it's up to you how you want to configure the three docks. By the way, to the right you may have noticed that we now have 10 effect slots. And now a big change. The mixer is vertically scalable. You'll notice that as I drag vertically, more features become visible. So if some controls you are used to seeing aren't available, this could be the issue. You can also show and hide features with the extra properties switch here. Just working down a mixer track, we have mute, pan, volume, phase, swap stereo channels, stereo separation, an FX master switch for the channel. This one has FX loaded, so it's lit. Plug in delay compensation control, a record arm switch, and routing out. Let's have a closer look at routing. As before, we can left click destination tracks to send to them. Let's switch to a larger view so the routing is more visible. At the top of the audio send volume knobs is a deselect switch. And if you find the cables all a bit too much, there's a mixer menu, view, show routing cables option. Then it's similar to before. But I like cables, so back they go. On the topic of mixer track views, there are now six view mode options that interact with your horizontal and vertical size. So plenty of options there for customized views. Extra large is a little more special. It now shows the effects in use per track. I'll just load a project with some effects in it. I'm using compact view, so that removes empty slots and shows the logical order. You can turn that off if you want to see the gaps. Let's have a look at some of the grouping options. I'll right click the track and 
route these starting from this track. The shortcut is Shift Control L, so let's use that. Now let's make a submix group. To make a multiple selection, hold Shift plus Control or Control left click and drag. I'll right click a member of the selection and select group. Let's rename that. Select an icon for it. And finally a color. Now we have dividers bounding the group. Dividers are visual indicators, they don't have a technical function. Now all these tracks are still routed to the master. To fix that, I can control plus left click on the track I want to use as the submix. Notice it's highlighted lighter than the rest, meaning it's the selected target for a right click menu option. Then from the right click menu, I can select track routing, route selected to this track only. And we have a submix to the master. You can also add separators anywhere you like. They will appear to the left of the selected track. Finally, if you're using the mixer in multi-touch mode, selecting this multi-touch control switch allows you to control multiple faders at once. Turn it off to access multi-touch gestures to do things like two finger tap for multiple selections. Next up, the channel window, renamed to channel rack. The pattern menu has moved to the menu bar and the channel options has moved from the menu bar down to the rack here. So the options and pattern menus have basically swapped locations. Another new feature is the piano roll view switch. This allows you to swap back and forth between steps and piano roll mode. It's also how you access the velocity and pan control for the steps. To add steps, just drag the window out and click to activate them as normal. Swing is now per channel. If I set the kick to 50%, and then open the clap, you can see they're independent. So the swing slider will multiply by those settings. Speaking of settings, the channel window settings are now integrated into the wrapper. So no more multiple windows for a single plugin. You can open and close the channel settings panel with the cog icon here. If we open the channel settings, the preview keyboard has one of those multi-touch control icons, and this allows us to play the keyboard on a touch screen. Finally, let's talk about adding channels to the rack. You can click the plus button down here, or you can right click it to open the plugin database. Alternatively, the add menu has a channel option, or you can use the browser plugin database and drag and drop from there, or right click and send to the selected channel. Speaking of channels, let's talk about managing VST plugins. As before, you can set the extra search folder from the options, file settings, and select your folder. That will initiate a scan, or you can start one manually. So if we look under the plugins category in the browser, the effects and generators show the existing plugins in the database. New VSTs will show under the installed category. Newly scanned plugins will be orange. This section shows all plugins you've installed. You can right click these and add to the plugin database as favorites. So now they will show in any menus where plugins are shown, but probably a better method is to open the plugin and use the add to plugin database as favorite option. From there, you will get a thumbnail preview. You can now right click plugins to delete them, which I can use to clean up this mess I just made. This is the one I made without the thumbnail. Speaking of plugins, many have been updated with more to come. To see these new plugins, open the manual and select what's new. For example, three times oscillator has been updated significantly. That's probably enough to get you started with the FL12 beta. If you don't own FL Studio yet, 
You can buy FL11 now, get access to the beta, and you'll get FL Studio 12 free as part of your lifetime updates. No more to pay, ever. Enjoy the FL Studio 12 beta. Thank you.